Welcome to an interview of TMB News. Today's interview is inevitably critical to understand the real history of Manipur. The history that is not distorted, but the facts. Today we bring to you former Dean of Students' Welfare, former Dean of the School of Social Sciences, and former Head of Department, Department of History, Manipur University, Professor Naurim Joykumar Singh. Professor, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Professor, as a historian, give us a brief history of Manipur. Who are the Maites and who are the Kukis? How would you describe Manipur on the basis of ethnicity? Well, uh, thank you, Napoleon, for uh, you know raising a very, very important issue, which is more or less directly connected with the history of this place. Well, uh, Manipur, indeed, it is a very, very, uh, uh, it is a very old kingdom, and it covers the entire areas of the history of a particular country, like from mythology to legendary and history. And uh, the history, the Manipur is a land which have a very long history of more than two thousand years. And uh, the history of Manipur, it begins from the first century AD that we call it 33 AD. And uh, the first ruler of Manipur was Nungda Laren Pakhangba. And I don't like to go into detail about academic aspects and all this. I just let me give you very small things. Well, in the second questions you asked about the identity of Maiti. Well, this is a very, very, uh, what is called, uh, it is a very, very complex question, at least to me also. And as a student of history, I have something in my mind that, that the Maitais, say, as we all know that the society of Manipur is constituted by the nine groups of people and again, again, seven groups of people. Say, Manipur is a land of the, the Margaritary roots, you know people from the different areas of the surrounding people from right from north to south, from south to north, you know. So a large number of peoples enter in, into Manipur from the different directions. And uh, this situation was continued for a pretty long time, perhaps it may be about millions of years also, that we do not know exactly, because it, it is directly connected with the meat and the legendary. Then after having a long assimilation process, in true, either for a peaceful way or through the violent way, after having a long process of assimilations, then it was squeezed to nine groups of people that we call it Salai. So then that is also mentioned in the ancient literary text that we call it Puya. Then here we have come across about the existence of Kuman, existence of Manga, uh, then Luang, Khabang, Amba, Sarang, like something like that, nine groups. Then again in 33 AD, then Nola Laren Pakhangba came and Nola Laren Pakhangba cut down the two, part, two groups of people and he fixed on seven that we call the Salai. So when we said, you know, the Salai, that is called the political confederacy. Then when we say Yek, there is a blood relationship. So therefore, on the basis of this Yek, seven groups of people, then the, the, the evolution of society was developed. The evolution, the process of evolution society was developed. Mm -hmm. So in these nine or seven group, we have not come across any name called Maite as an ethnic group. As an ethnic group. Mm -hmm. So therefore, my uh, my personal opinion is this: this name Maite, perhaps it may emerge just after the assimilation of this group, because at that time, you know, because a single nomenclature, perhaps it may be required. So therefore, in order to have a single nomenclature, perhaps this term might maybe emerge as a single nomenclature of all this group. So to me, because to me, this is, this is my personal, mm -hmm. uh, you know, observation to me, the Maitai, the term Maitai, perhaps it may be developed, it may be emerged just after the completion of the assimilation of these different groups of people. Okay. So as an ethnic group, mm -hmm. the Maitai was, I have never come across the existence of Maite before the coming of Nunda Lair in Pakhang. Mm -hmm. So this is my observation about the Maite. Mm -hmm. Then you also put another question about Manipur. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that is also very interesting. And the question was, 
Who are the maydays and who are the cookies? Well, <laughs> I think that question, yes, is all right. L let me try to answer it. I have said in a, in a, in a meeting with the Union Home Minister, I have said very categorically that before the coming of British, there was no cookie in Manipur. I have said it very categorically. Why I have said it? Because this term cookie and a naga, mm -hmm. it was developed by the colonial writers according to their convention. Mm -hmm. Cookie term, it is a blanket term. No, no. And uh, uh, there are two groups of people according to the classification mm -hmm. of the colonial writers. Mm -hmm. One is called old cookie group, mm -hmm. another one is called new cookie group. Mm -hmm. This is their observation. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that, you know, the in Manipur particularly, now let me, let me use this term Manipur for the time being. In Manipur, we never call any ethnic group by the term Kuki and a Naga. Say for example, Naga. Mm -hmm. Say we always call Tangful, we always call Maram, we mm -hmm. always call, because they call them by their ethnic group, mm -hmm. not by the, uh, this, uh, 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 what's called in the blanket term. Mm -hmm. So likewise in the case of cookies also. Mm -hmm. So we call them Kongshai, then Anal, then Ma, uh, uh, what's called the Tarao, the Moyon and Monsang like that. Mm -hmm. So we call like this. So therefore, this term Kuki and Naga, this is a new phenomenon, emerged only just after the coming of British in Manipur. So mm -hmm. also just after the, after the, what is called, because they use these two terms, mm -hmm. Kuki and Naga, it's a blanket term. So you have mentioned in the two terms, the old Kuki yes, and the new yes, Kuki. Yes, yes, So what, what is, well, what is well, it like exactly? This is the classification, this is the classification mm -hmm. of the colonial writers. Mm -hmm. So when they, when they said the new Kuki, then old Kuki, that means old cookie. Can you mention some of the tribes which are included? Yes, yes, in? yes, yes. So they mentioned uh, old cookie. They mentioned the names like Anal, Tarao, Moyon, Monsang, Langang, like that. So these groups of people now, 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 now they claim themselves is Anal. Mm -hmm. But according to their classification, the Anal, Moyon, Monsang, Langang, all these things, they belong to old cookie group. But these groups of peoples, they are, they are closely associated right from the mythical period of time. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, so we have a, uh, a uh, we have a deity called Wang Brain. Mm -hmm. You know, Wang Brain is one of the uh, what's called the guardians of a lo local area. You know, mm -hmm. this southern part, and Wang Brain married the Anal mm -hmm. lady. Mm -hmm. So that means because this Anal is closely associated with the mythical period of time. You know. But whereas in the in in the in the old cookie, this is old cookie group, mm -hmm. but new cookie group they call it Thado. Mm -hmm. So if it is so, then you know the Thado group enter into Manipur during the period of King Narasimha, 1844. Mm -hmm. The reason was that because at a particular period of time they settled in the that now we call it Mizoram, mm -hmm. they settled at the, what's called Lusai Hills, mm -hmm. and they were pushed by the, because they uh, removed from that place by the Lusai people. Mm -hmm. They entered into Manipur because this is a very long history. Mm -hmm. Then the Narasimha was in a very precarious position to solve this issue because they be just after the uh, seven years devastation, the, pol the political position of Manipur was in a very bad shape. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the British began to interfere in the internal administration of Manipur. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the, uh, mainly because of their weak position, the Narasimha was not able to settle the issue. Therefore, he took the help of one political agent, British political agent, his name is Matlock. So with the help of Matlock, these people, they allowed them to settle in the southern part of Manipur that we call it Surat. So Surat is a new name. Mm -hmm. Earlier, it was, uh, it was called by different name. Mm -hmm. So they were allowed to settle in this. So the arrival of the Kukis, Kukis tribes, uh, is from Maharaj Narsing. The new cookie group. The new cookie. Mm -hmm. The new cookie, according to the classification of the colonial writers, mm -hmm. the new cookie group entered into Manipur only in 1844, in large scale way. In, uh, in uh, uh, well, uh, perhaps some small quantity of cookie may be entered mm -hmm. that we know, but in a large scale way, mm -hmm. they enter into Manipur. As in you have mentioned, uh, the, the bloodlines of uh, like nine bloodlines in Manipur? No, no. The earlier that you no, said seven no, no, plants? No, 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 it is like this. The question is, what is strife? 
tribe is, uh, you know, because I don't like to go into detail mm -hmm. about the definition of tribe, you know. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, as I have said to you just now, that, you know, in the very, very ancient period of time, perhaps from mythical period, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of peoples enter into Manipur from a different direction. Mm -hmm. And a lot, from west to south, uh, from north to south, from west to east, like that, you know, mm -hmm. because Manipur was a migratory, was a what's called the migration route, you know, mm -hmm. of the different groups of people. So we have so many, uh, so many ethnic groups that now we call them Lai, mm -hmm. because we do not, we are, we are not able to identify their, uh, we are not able to establish their identity. Mm -hmm. So because of them, we, we call them Lai, mm -hmm. because when we say Lai, we have no answer. Mm -hmm. Like that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, these group of peoples, you know, a long process was going on. The process, a long process, assimilation process, what I've said, assimilation, grouping position. Mm -hmm. Then it was squeezed to nine groups of people. Kuman, Moirang, Moirang also, Moirang is constituted mm -hmm. by four groups of people. Mm -hmm. Kuman also constituted by a few groups of people. So like that, you know, this after assimilation, the assimilation process was completed. It's the blood of um, the so-called name Kuki included in that uh, blood of that, uh, that we don't know. We don't know in the science that mm -hmm. because uh, the, the this term is I have said to you just now mm -hmm. because the, there are so many ethnic groups. There are so many ethnic groups you know settled in the different parts of the surrounding areas. Say for example when we discuss about the Puritan Kunto mm -hmm. and we have come across a number of ethnic groups who settle in the different the, now the present Kabo Valley. Mm -hmm. Still we don't know their identity and uh, the name of that identity now it is also missing. So many changes, so many changes took place during this long period of time. You know. So therefore even say for example, uh, yes uh, some of them maybe belong to the ethnic, maybe belong to Naga, maybe belong to somebody. So we have even more famous elements also here mm -hmm. and uh, we have which are, what is called the Thai, uh, Thai, Thai elements also here. So therefore, now it is very difficult to identify. But what I'm trying to say is this, according to this, uh, what's called the classification of the colonial writers mm -hmm. in Manipur, there are two groups of people and Kuki, one is called old Kuki group, another one is new Kuki group. And as I have said, just re let me repeat, mm -hmm. the old Kuki group people, they directly closely associated right from the ancient period of time, perhaps maybe from mythical also. Mm -hmm. uh, the mythical is something different from history. Yeah. Then again, the new cookie group, according to the colonial writers, the large chunk of the new cookie group entered into Manipur in 1944. That means the recent phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So that is what, you know, that is my answer. So but, the new but, the, but, but, but your question about the blood things, mm -hmm. that is very difficult to identify. Okay. But the new cookie group, where, where, where does they come from? From, from Myanmar, from Bangladesh, or from, no, from no. where they are? No, no, it is like this. The cookie people. Mm -hmm. You know, the Kabo Valley, the upper Burma area, it is the belt of the Kabo Kuki people. You know, and in Burma, they were called it Jin. Mm -hmm. And you know, so, so therefore, the, the Kuki is also a, it's a kind of nomadic tribe at that particular period of time because they don't have any permanent land. They will settle somewhere, they, get, they will go somewhere again, they, from there again, they will go somewhere. So that is their nature. So as you, as you mentioned that Kuki is a nomadic tribe, uh, I, I would, at, I, I would at, like to mention. At that particular period of time. Yeah, I would, uh, I would, no, I would, not now. So, I mean, after Maharaj nursing? No, no, what I'm trying to say is, that is not a question. Mm -hmm. Now they have a subtle area, mm -hmm. but still the habit is going on. Say, for example, in the cookie, in the, in, in the cookie society, mm -hmm. cookie ship is the head, is the, he is the old in old, mm -hmm. and all lands belong to the cookie. Mm -hmm. And then even the cookie ship, and his son also may become cookie. Mm -hmm. And then he will, he, will, he, he, he will go somewhere and he will establish another village. So that trend is still, it is, it is continued for quite a long time. It still is going on to a certain extent. But if they are from the ground of nomadic, you know, tribes, the anglo Kukiwa, the kong Saiwa, the Kuki Rebellion, <laughs> these are same though, um, yeah, does yeah, this yeah, what yeah. really let, ever let, happen? Let, 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 let me call you. In 1917, there was a, according to the colonial writers, there was a rebellion that is called the Kuki Rebellion, mm -hmm. right? So this Kuki Rebellion, because the, the colonial writers, as an administrator, mm -hmm. they took it as a rebellion. Mm -hmm. They took it as a rebellion. Then again, uh, one of my friends, you know, he, he was an STO and he's now expired. He's, uh, his name is Kibgen 
kaikoti dan kiwen and we call him athagatha he wrote a book thadougal thadougal gal means war so he called it thadougal that means it is not a cookie war according to his to his interpretation it was purely thadougal thadougal right and some other people also mentioned about stongloi war something something like that but the war the Kuki, the war of Kuki independence, it is written by Gangte, who was the former director of the education. Mm -hmm. So, suppose if we, if we want to say war, mm -hmm. you know, the term war, war means it is a conflict between the two sovereigns. Mm -hmm. It is a conflict between mm -hmm. two sovereigns. Even I don't like to mention about even the independence also. So Indep Tata was Tata. Independence and sovereignty is slightly different. Mm -hmm. So, when we say sovereign, that means two sovereign powers free from all interference so it should be say for example uh, why we call it the third war, first second world war second world first world war that means it was a war it was a conflict between the two independent two sovereign powers mm -hmm. it's not it mm -hmm. but whereas in the case of cookie the british used this term rebellion because they revolted against authority mm -hmm. so this is the interpretations of the colonial writers and uh, the local people, we, mm -hmm. the Maitai people, mm -hmm. called them Kongsai because the Kuki people was known by the people as Kongsai. So Kongsai war, Kongsai land we call it. Mm -hmm. But this term land cannot be interpreted as, as war, war also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cannot be interpreted because, mainly because of our limited, you know, uh, limited So it cannot be termed as war. A war. So the Anglo Kuki war doesn't exist at all. It was just a rebellion according it to was the rebellion, but. But this is the interpretation given by the, uh, you know, the Mr. Gangte, you know. Okay. Gangte. This is the this is the interpretation of the Gangte. But if we if we analyze purely from the mm -hmm. the 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 from the war mm -hmm. from the perspective of the war, that means war means the conflict between the two sovereign. So therefore, my my uh, my my observe my suggestion and my observation is this. Well. Uh, the 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 cookie people they may like to use it because history is a history the his the most important part is the interpretation of history. Mm -hmm. Say for example, in 1857 there was a uh, what's called a, a violent movement in India that we call it the British writer call it the Sepoy Mutiny, mm -hmm. but whereas Indian writers call it the First War of Independence. Mm -hmm. But some event a, a a particular event took place. In this aspect, there was no different opinion. Mm -hmm. But how historians look mm -hmm. from their perspective? So, so it therefore, cannot be seen as war. Uh, no, according to you, it cannot be seen as war. Yeah, you know. Suppose if we analyze from the from the from the angle of the war, mm -hmm. because war means the it requires two sovereign two states. Two sovereign states. Why are the Cookie sisters and brothers extremely vexed to stand for the integrity of Manipur? Well, the things like this. Uh, suppose if we go back to history and as a student of history and you know, I came to know that because the cookies so-called cookies they were also actively participated in every inch of the administration of Manipur before the merger of Manipur into India and in one way or the others they have also you know, actively participated in administration mm -hmm. even they also took plus uh, took uh, took part even in the war with other foreign countries mm -hmm. also though it is not specifically mentioned you know in our old puyas and all these things and from their folk tradition from their history we came to know many things you know so therefore what i am trying to say this in one way when when uh, when the manipur was ruled when manipur was in a feudal state mm -hmm before the before the uh, merger into india you know even the cookie peoples they played a very very important as a protector of the king also mm -hmm. so so that so therefore you know uh, this is the recent phenomenon before that you know mm -hmm. there was no uh, enmity among the uh, different ethnic groups so just okay. during the feudal mm -hmm. time you know then Manipur was merged into India. But about this, you are talking about the recent phenomenon, I suppose. Yeah, the recent yeah, phenomenon. About the recent phenomenon. Where what I wanted to ask is the reason behind there may be certain reasons, so many reasons. But I wanted to put out some of the reasons. Well, well, well. To be frank, you know, uh, uh, to be frank, 
I don't like to go into detail about the factors responsible for the outbreak of such things. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you very categorically because as you know that in history, when we study history and we analyze certain uh, what's called uh, responsible causes, mm -hmm. then again, again and then we have, uh, then we also try to know what is the immediate cause. Mm -hmm. So, so far this recent phenomenon is concerned, the immediate cause according to the, according to the ground realities, what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say according to the ground realities, the immediate cause is more or less directly related with the uh, demands of the mighty people to include in the scheduled days. Okay. This is what, this is according to the ground realities. Mm -hmm. Why I have said, because on 28th of uh, uh, what's called April, mm -hmm. uh, some burning took place, mm -hmm. some burning the event Chura took Chandpur, place yeah. in Chura mm -hmm. That was purely a private matter. Mm -hmm. Then again, on the 3rd of May, a rally was organized. It was directly against the demand of the, the inclusion S of mighty mm -hmm. people in the scheduled list. So that means that is the cause. Mm -hmm. So in that, that rally, on then at about some 3.30 mm -hmm. p.m., some unfortunate incidents began to place, right? Mm -hmm. So from this angle, mm -hmm. you know, my submission is from this angle, mm -hmm. the immediate cause for the outbreak of this movement is directly related, mm -hmm. uh, is the immediate cause, what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. the immediate cause is directly related with the, what's called, the demand of the inclusion of the Maitai in the scheduled list. Mm -hmm. This is the immediate cause. Mm -hmm. And the other causes, now we are talking a lot about the poppies business mm -hmm. or the what is called the uh, government uh, war on drugs. Uh, war on drugs and the, all these things. Perhaps this also. And the restoration, be, the reserve for us by the government. Mm -hmm. So all these things, perhaps it may be. But this aspect, still, mm -hmm. they never said that these are the causes for the outbreak of their movement. Mm -hmm. Right. Then again, now they, they put in the agenda. Mm -hmm. That is called the establishment of the separate administrative unit. Mm -hmm. So, uh, on 3rd May, there was no agenda. Mm -hmm. Their only agenda was against the inclusion of the mighty, mm -hmm. you know, in the scheduled list. But now, uh, then the, 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 the 10 cookie MLAs, they began to demand the administrative, separate administrative unit. So, perhaps the long-term plan? So, so, therefore, in this respect, you know, as a student of history, mm -hmm. because I have done some work on history mm -hmm. of people. So as a student of history, when they began to demand for having a separate administrative unit, then I look back to history. Because there was a very serious demands about the, uh, about the emergence of the idea of the Jomu or Jomi. Mm -hmm. So it was actually started in 1955, but it was concretized in 1959. You know, under the leadership of one T. Gogin, he mm -hmm. was the minister in the Manipur Assembly. Mm -hmm. Right. But this idea was not acceptable to all the people, according to, because he also published a book. Mm -hmm. According to his uh, publication, mm -hmm. you know, other people, they deadly against the, what's called the concept of Zhou. You mean the Zhou unification? Uh, that will come later on. Okay. So, so about the Zhou, because according to his hypothesis, according to his theory, mm -hmm. all the Kuki peoples, they all come from a uh, from the Zhou because this is the earlier, this earliest nomenclature of all the people of the Kuki people. Some of them they, they claim that they they are the lost tribes of Israel. Uh, that part I don't know. This is their claim, but you know there are so many uh, you know so many observations that I don't like to go into detail in this aspect, you know, because perhaps it may hurt their sentiment also. What I'm trying to say is this, because when they began to when they began to ask for the establishment of a separate ministry, then I have started to look back to history, because in 1955 the the, the concept of Joe emerged. It was not acceptable to all the Guki people. So because of this now, for quite long, then then in the meantime they have started. Even because he mentioned in his book that even the Lal Denga was not in favor of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Then, then again, what happened was that in 19, then after his death, even, even before his death, mm -hmm. now the Joe Reunification Organization, they form an organization called Joe Reunification Organization. Mm -hmm. So the chairman of the Joe, Joe Reunification Organization, his name was Thang Lian Pao. Mm -hmm. 
and he is from Burma. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to his press statement, he said that he was invited by his brothers from India mm -hmm. to take the responsibility of this organization. Mm -hmm. Right. Then again, accordingly, he in his press conference, even he said that the the job movement, mm -hmm. this reorganization process, it is it is its ultimate aim was to establish a separate political identity of the Jo people. Mm -hmm. That means it is a great to me. If it is so, mm -hmm. then it is a great challenge to the national security of India. So okay, it's a matter of national security. Uh, national security. This is my observation, mm -hmm. because uh, they just want to form a separate political identity. Mm -hmm. Means some portion from India, some portion from Arunachal Pradesh, uh, Bangladesh, and mm -hmm. some portion from just like the Israel type of things. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they may like to form it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, looking from their historical aspect, mm. you know, the previous one, then I look from that angle. So therefore, I said the the demand for the separate emission unit, it is a nucleus. Mm -hmm. It may be a nucleus, mm -hmm. you know, for the formation of a separate political identity of the Jau people. So it is very related to the recent report of the cabinet subcommittee. So around 2,187 illegal immigrants for the first initial phase it was found in 41 locations. So the government, um, you know, um, um, they requested them to move to um, a government shelter. Yo, but they but were against, uh, completely against. Uh, yeah, the, the things mm -hmm. like this. Now, that is, that is, that is the directly concerned with the government. Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 as far as it, um, the uh, security of in India is concerned, mm. These were the illegal immigrants from Myanmar. Mm. So Myanmar is run by the Huntas now. So if any one of them, it is very near. Delhi is not too far from Manipur. No, what I'm trying to say is this, because this is the another aspect. Because as a student of history, I look for purely from historical angle. You know. What I'm trying to say is this, about the illegal immigration of the people from Burma, mm. it, is the, it is directly concerned with the government. It is directly concerned with the national security. Mm -hmm. It is directly concerned with the demographic issues and all this. Mm -hmm. So it is more or less directly related with the state government as well as the central government. And I am told, I am told that even the central government, in order to check the illegal things, mm -hmm. because now they have come across many things. But now perhaps this is also maybe one of the reasons also about their anger. Mm -hmm. That part I don't like to go into detail. Mm -hmm. What I am trying to say is this: this is the national uh, uh, security issue because. The government of India is supposed to know all these things, mm -hmm. and uh, il about the about the talk of illegal migration. Now it is not a recent phenomenon, mm -hmm. right? But the question is, how, how did, or rather, why and how mm -hmm. they were able to enter into India freely? Who is responsible? Mm -hmm. Because the, the 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 boundary of India is is uh, in, in, uh, very carefully guarded by the security personnel. Mm -hmm. But at the nose of the security department, how they were able to enter into India. In connection with the entry of the illegal migrants, you know, mm -hmm. uh, let me uh, give you some very interesting uh, information. Say, for example, you know, because their plan, it is not a new plan. Mm -hmm. Because suppose if we look at from the 1955, it is almost all more than 70 years old, you know, because that means uh, their process is not, it is a consistent plan in mm -hmm. the sense. That separate homeland, separate, no, whatever, yeah, the separate uh -huh. homeland. So, so in order to fulfill, you know, their reunification process, mm -hmm. you know, a series of class took place mm -hmm. within the cookie with other different, uh, what is called ethnic groups. Say, mm -hmm. for example, in 1959 and 60, there was a class within cookie people and Mar people. Mm -hmm. Then again, in 1997 and 98, then again, they fight, they fought against Paiti. Mm -hmm. Then again, they in 2003 with the Dimasa. Mm -hmm. Then again, with 2003 and 2004 with the uh, what's called the what's called the Karbi Along people. Mm -hmm. Then again, in 1992 and 97 with Naga people, like mm -hmm. now turned to Maiti. So, what I'm trying to say is to justify, you know, mm -hmm. their objective, mm -hmm. you know, they. Uh, uh, have class a, a series of you know uh, these things class took place you know mm -hmm. uh, against the uh, other people. Mm -hmm. What I am trying to say because this is also one of the important features 
of characteristic features of the uh, what is called the, uh, the present term model. Present term model. Well, this is what I mean. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say about the illegal aspect, you know, mm -hmm. that is that is that is the government's issue. That is to be sacked by the government from every angle, mm -hmm. maybe from the national security point of view, maybe from the demography point of view. And uh, uh, so even this, this now we're talking a lot about the three part agreement of the shoe, all these things. Mm -hmm. So now the very big question is because it's still now it is a known fact that, you know, most of the cookie militant they were led by the people coming from Burma. Mm -hmm. So uh, now the question is how is it how it is possible to make a three-party agreement mm -hmm. with the Indian government, the government, and mm -hmm. and uh, the cookie militants to the organizations led by the foreigners? Mm -hmm. So these are these aspect is also look in look uh, into very carefully. So now it has by become the apparent. Oh uh, yeah, apparent. Yeah, you know, these things. So uh, as a as a historian, uh, how do you see the future of uh, future of Manipur? Well, the, the problem is this, you know, we all believe in democracy yeah. and uh, suppose uh, still, still we do not know what because now the decision of the Manipur, mm -hmm. it is not in the hands of Manipur, Manipuri people, the decision in the central government and how the central government look into it. Say, for example, in 1954, Manipur was the, a, 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 a what's called a reorganization commission, mm -hmm. recommitted Manipur to include mm -hmm. in Assam. But it was not accepted by the central authority on the ground that Manipur have their own history and culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, so therefore, suppose the central government, mm -hmm. you know, if they strongly believe in the, what is called the unique history of Manipur, mm -hmm. the, if they strongly believe in the unique cultural history of Manipur, definitely they will respect it. Mm -hmm. But if they don't, if they look purely from the administrative point of view, because when Manipur is divided, India is not it doesn't affect the Indian boundary. Mm -hmm. So if we look from the angle, then we don't know what will happen. Mm -hmm. So because now we cannot see, uh, we cannot analyze anything about the possibility of the future. Mm -hmm. But I hope, mm -hmm. because as I, I hope that central government or rather the peoples in the central government, you know, uh, they are all very sensitive persons, very reasonable persons, mm -hmm. and they will take a proper decisions according to their wisdom. You know. I, 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 I leave it to them, you know, because I, ha I have the thing to say. Suppose if some, some kind of, if the peace is restored, the immediate, the, what is called our immediate, the need of the power, the need of the hour is the peace. We want peace. Mm -hmm. And suppose if we have some kind of a dialogue, definitely we will be able to bring some kind of understanding. Mm -hmm. But still, that process is not, we have not seen this process. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who will be the responsible either state government or central government. But the point is this, from the 3rd of May, mm -hmm. the, the chief minister of Manipur was not in the power. Mm -hmm. So everything is in the hands of the union home minister. Mm -hmm. Suppose if we look from that angle, the responsibility is central government. I look from the angle. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor, for joining us today. This is TMB News. Keep watching TMB Digital Network.